Will the congregation please stand? Good afternoon. Good and afternoon. Welcome. Our service begins on page 323 in the Book of Common Prayer. found in the service bulletin. Blessed be our God forever Amen. and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. With God. God. Be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this your family from whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our scripture readings. transgressions, 
crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole. And by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter. And like a sheep that before its shearers is silent. So he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, <coughs> stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich. Although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. <clears throat> when you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will not. Uh, therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Remaining seated, let us say together Psalm 22, found in your service leaflet. My God, my, my God, God. Why have you forsaken me, and are so far from my cry and from the words of my distress? Oh, my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer. By night as well, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our forefathers put their trust in you. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried out to you and they were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, he trusted in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me out of the womb and kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many young wolves encircle me, strong wolves bash on the ground of me. They will open wide their jaws at me, like a reckoning and a roaring wine. I am poured out like a water, all my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting wax. My mouth is dried out like a pot shirt. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. And you have laid me in the dust of the grave. Packs of dogs close me in, and gangs of evildoers circle around me. They pierce my hands and my feet. 
I can count all my bones. They stare and float over me. They divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. Be not far away, O Lord. You are my strength. Hasten to help me. Save me from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, my wretched body from the horns of wild bulls. I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. Stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel. All you of Jacob's line give glory. For he does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty, neither does he hide his face from them. But when they cry to him, he hears them. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all families of the nations shall bow before him. For a kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone, all who sleep in the earth bow down and worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done. reading from Paul's letter to the Hebrews. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. He also adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. <clears throat> and let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. For those participating in the reading of the Passion, uh, you may uh, stand to say your part and, and be seated afterwards. <clears throat> Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus went out with his disciples across, across the Kedron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and, he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, because Jesus, and all, Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. 
Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked him, Whom are you looking for? They asked, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with him. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again, Jesus asked them, Whom are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those who he gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the soldiers, their officer, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. First they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? Peter said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing around it and warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. When the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teachings, Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Aeneas sent Jesus bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. Those who were standing near the fire asked him, You are not, you are not also one of Jesus' disciples, are you? Peter denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with Jesus? Again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, the cock crowed. When they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters, it was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the court headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you king of the Jews? Jesus answered, do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked, so are you the, a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, 
And for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, What is the truth? After Pilate had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against them, but you have a custom that I release someone for, the pa for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you? They shouted in reply, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was abandoned. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wore, wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to the Jews, Look, I'm bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the, the police saw Jesus, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourself and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Hmm. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters and again asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you know that I have the power to release you and the power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, you would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release Jesus, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at the place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. Pilate said to the Jews, Here is your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, we have no king but the emperor. Then Pilate handed Jesus over to them to be crucified. Will the congregation please stand? <clears throat> so they took Jesus and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what was called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew was called Golgotha. There they crucified him with two others, one on either side with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priest of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but this man said, I am King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside his mother, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, 
here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, I am thirsty. A jar of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up the spirit. Since this was the day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath. Specifically, that Sabbath was his day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and their bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead. They did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified, so that you may also believe. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones were broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, They will look on the one whom they have pierced. After this, after these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission. So he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with spices and linen cloths, according to the burial ritual of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. The greatest story ever told, what sweet love is this? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, our readers. The most powerful Good Friday sermon has already been preached in today's Passion Story. But I'd like to offer some reflections on the sermon or sermons that Jesus preached from the cross. Jesus' most powerful sermons came from the cross. One of his most powerful sermons came from his first three statements of his last words. Father, forgive them. Today you will be with me in paradise. And woman, here is your son. Son, here is your mother. These three statements reveal the depths of Jesus' enormous and compassionate love for others even while he was suffering and dying on the cross. Father, forgive them. Or words of a forgiving, endless love and words of just pure grace. Jesus demonstrated this grace-filled love even in the midst of those who would abandon him, his own disciples, those who would torment him, and those who would kill him. Dying on the cross, he would think of the needs of others, even his own persecutors. Oh, what sweet love is this. And he still loves us like that today. In the second statement, 
Today you will be with me in paradise. In this second statement, Jesus is again thinking of the needs of others. A thief. A thief who is asking for pity. Here at the last minute. And how does Jesus respond? Does he say, you have got to be kidding me. <laughs> I'm hanging here dying on the cross and you want to pull off some last minute foxhole conversion? You have a lot of nerve there, buddy. No, Jesus did not say that. In fact, he said the ultimate words. Today, you will be with me in paradise. Now, what does this part of the story mean to us? Good folks, that it is never too late. It's never too late to turn our hearts to God. There is no such thing as being too far gone or too late to seek and find the love of Christ and his redemption for us, for you. We need to remember this for those who we might be most worried about, those that we love, that we're concerned about, and even ourselves. What sweet love is this? The third statement, woman, here is your son. Son, here is your mother. What heart is not melted by Jesus' compassion for his own mother and his friend John. One of Jesus' last acts was to care for those that he loved. Jesus was reaching out to his mother, his own mother. He was concerned about her and her future. On his deathbed on the cross, Jesus asked his friend and us, and us, to honor his mother. Not to worship her, but to honor her throughout the generations and ages. Just a reminder about the Blessed Mother. The Blessed Mother was the single person with Jesus from the nativity birth, actually, even before the end. When she was pregnant, when she had God in her, all the way to the foot of the cross. The Blessed Mother said yes to the angel Gabriel and was the first person on earth, think about this, the first person on earth who believed in Jesus as the Son of God. Making her really the first disciple and the first apostle. Mary pushed Jesus to do his first miracle at the wedding of Cana, which I always find a very interesting, if not humorous, scene. But Mary believed in Jesus even before the disciples. She believed in his power. Mary, Jesus' mother, stood by him until the bitter end as she remembered the ponderings of her heart that sometimes maybe only another mother's feel. It is my hope that St. Philip will always honor Jesus' mother, the Blessed Mother Mary, as he wished. And also, of course, within a wider symbolic context, Jesus was also asking us to take care of each other. Those words also symbolically mean take care of each other. It's a broader community of love. These last words on the cross demonstrate that Jesus focused on the needs of others even while he was suffering on the cross. These three statements form a message about the incredible love and grace of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
This message teaches us about the sweet love of Jesus. It teaches us about a love on a cross. It teaches us about how love, as we bear our own cross, it teaches us about how to live and also how to die with forgiveness and grace and compassionate love for others. Not only did Jesus in his life teach us how to live, but especially on the cross and in his last suffering, he, he taught us how to die. And thanks be to God, the last rites that I am most blessed with have been those folks who have practiced, have modeled Jesus' own death uh, on their deathbed. They had words of grace and forgiveness, love, and compassion for others. Oh, what a blessing it is to be a priest and to be a part of that. As we look upon the wooden cross today that will be brought in shortly, may we be reminded that by, think about this folks, by one man's sinful passion, the first Adam, we were brought into sin and death. By one man's suffering, his suffering passion, the second Adam of Jesus Christ. We are brought into redemption and life in the everlasting love of God. Jesus Christ reversed the sins of Adam upon himself and upon us. And think about this. As the wood of one tree from the Garden of Eden condemns us and separates us from God, the wood of another tree, the Holy Cross, redeems us and binds us to the love of God forever and ever. That tree in the garden condemned us, and the tree, the wood of the cross, redeems us. I contemplate on this and I tell you I get teary every time I think about it. God took Jesus' last breath on the cross and gave it to us for new life. God took Jesus' last breath on the cross and gave it to us for a new life. Amen. Thanks be to God. <laughs> May we always have a grateful heart and give ourselves to him. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.
As we remain seated or kneeling, please turn to the solemn collects found on page 277 in the Book of Common Prayer. 277. Dear people of God, our Heavenly Father sent His Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved, that all who believe in Him might be delivered from the power of sin and death and become heirs with Him of everlasting life. We pray, therefore, for people everywhere according to their needs. <clears throat> Let us pray for the Holy Catholic Church of Christ throughout the world, for its unity and witness and service, for all bishops and other ministers and people who may serve, for all bishops and other people and people of this diocese, for all Christians in this community, and about and for those about to be baptized, that God will confirm his church in faith, increase it in love, and persevere it in peace. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Let us pray for all nations and peoples of the earth and for those in authority among them, for the President of the United States, for the Congress and the Supreme Court, for members and representatives of the United Nations, for all those who serve the common good, that by God's help they may seek justice and truth and live in peace and concord. Almighty God, kindle, we pray, in every heart the true love of peace, and guide with your wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquility your dominion may increase until the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for all who suffer and are afflicted in body or in mind. For the hungry and the homeless, the destitute and the oppressed, for the sick, the wounded, and the crippled, for those in loneliness, fear, and anguish, for those who face temptation, doubt, and despair, for the sorrowful and the bereaved, for prisoners and captives and those in mortal danger, that God in his mercy will comfort and relieve them and grant them the knowledge of his love and stir up in us the will and patience to minister to their needs. Gracious God, the comfort of all who sorrow, the strength of all who suffer, let the cry of those in misery and need come to you, that they may find your mercy present with them in all their afflictions, and give us, we pray, the strength to serve them for the sake of him who suffered for us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for all who have not received the gospel of Christ, for those who have never heard the word of salvation, for those who have lost their faith, for those who are hardened by sin and indifference. Hmm for the contemptuous and the scornful, for those who are enemies of the cross of Christ and persecutors of his disciples, for those who in the name of Christ have persecuted others, that God will open their hearts to the truth and lead them to faith and obedience.
merciful God, creator of all the peoples of the earth, and lover of souls, have compassion on all who do not know you, as you are revealed in your Son, Jesus Christ. Let your gospel be preached with grace and power to those who have not heard it. Turn the hearts of those who resist it, and bring home to your fold those who have gone astray, that there may be one flock under one shepherd, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us commit ourselves to our God and pray for the grace of our holy life, that with all who have departed this world and have died in the peace of Christ, and those whose faith is known to God alone, we may be accounted worthy to enter into the fullness of the joy of our Lord and receive the crown of life in the day of resurrection. O oh God of unchangeable power and eternal life, look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery, by the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
2 is found on page 281 in the Book of Common Prayer and also in your service bulletin. <clears throat> we adore you, O Christ, and we bless you because, because by your holy, holy cross we you have redeemed the world. If we have died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Our confession is found on page 331 in the Book of Common Prayer, and again also in your service bulletin.
Jesus said, it is more blessed to give and to give of ourselves than to receive.
come of thee, O Lord, and of thy kingdom have been given thee. Amen. At this point in our service, uh, you have the option of taking reserve sacrament. Uh, that is uh, an, an individual preference, but you're welcome to come and uh, kneel and take communion from the reserve sacrament that has been in our area of repose. However, right, let's begin by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, our Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated.
body to Christ, the bread of heaven. The blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now. pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, we pray you to set your passion, cross, and death between your judgment and our souls, now in the hour of our death. Give mercy and grace to the living, pardon and rest to the dead, and to your holy church, peace and concord, and to us sinners, everlasting life and glory for whom with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now may the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you during this holy week, during our great Easter celebration, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. This concludes our service that the congregation will uh, lead in silence. <coughs>